This evening, we are going to look at Morris Runner and, and try to have it integrate with N1MM, which is a future project. But we're going to get a little experience here with uh, using Morris Runner so that we can then prepare ourselves for field day. Did I hear somebody in the back? Was it? I, I did hear something. Oh, oh, come on. I, I should have had you plug it in here. Okay, um, so what we're going to do tonight, because of the fact that we don't have the other computer here, we're going to take a look at the Morris runner, the characteristics of it, how to get it, how to tune it up, how to make it work, the things that you want to look for. And then we will carry this over to the next meeting when I get with uh, Howard and we get the whole thing set up like we want to have it so it's one integrated program. So this is part one of a three-part program and hopefully next time we're going to have parts two and three connected into part one. <clears throat> this program is uh, called Morris Runner because the only thing it sends you is call signs. And it sends you call signs from all over the world. So you can find them from Venezuela, from Germany, from Finland, and from the United States, wherever. It just sends you these random call signs. And what you do is you enter the call sign in there, and then when you respond to the call that you're hearing, then it will send 599, and then it will assign a number. I think this one assigns numbers, does it? Yes, it does. It assigns a number, and then when you get the call sign right, and you go through the protocol of responding back to the call, sending him a 599, sending him the number. He sends you a 599 back, sends you his number, which you enter into that little box there where it says NR number. And then it shows you the score on the top there. It shows that uh, you have gotten it correct, and then it gives you credit for one, and then they send you another one after that. Now. Uh, a comment. Yes. It looks like you can change the call now, now oh. that it stopped. Oh, maybe that was it. Okay, thank you. Let's see if we can do that. Okay. Whoops. Did it take it? Okay, that looks good. Okay, and we'll leave it there. All right, so that does look like it. So now, when we go down here and we start to call CQ, which is down here, the F1 key or the CQ key, it will then call CQ from K4HTA, which is, or actually we should really say K4XY because we will be using K4XY at field day. We we'll use K4HTA for the, uh, there we go. We use K4HDA for the GOTA station. K4XY is the, the uh, call sign that we use for the other stations that are in the competition. So we've now got the K, we got the call sign in there. The CW is speed, whatever you feel comfortable with. The um, the tone. Pardon me. All one speed, not spacing out. Uh, not really. This is the speed that you're sending at. The speed that comes in. Yeah, I think it varies the speeds coming in, but it doesn't come in really fast. It comes in at a rather slow speed. So, that, you know, you, if, you're, if you're sending a 10, you're not going to be copying at 30. So, uh, by putting in 10 there, I know that's the speed that goes out, and it limits the speed that comes in. It does, they don't all come in at 10. Sometimes they come in at 2 and 3. There was a couple of them that really came in very slow. It was a, a 2 would be jit, jit. Duh, duh, duh. Which reminds me, that <coughs> you have to listen. You have to listen to this very carefully because this was on my other computer. If you don't know Morris code, you don't know DIT. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that. Okay. That's right. So now we. You didn't get that, did you? Yes, I did. <laughs> so now we're looking at. The code speed at 10, which is as slow as it goes. The uh, CW pitch, the guy that was talking, uh, K7OG, who has set this program up, suggested 550 or 600 because he was using speakers. He said he generally uses a different frequency, but with the speakers, five to 600, 550 or 600 seemed like the one you want to do. 
and the, the bandwidth, he recommended 550. I'm not sure why he said on that. Now, band conditions, <coughs> when you once get good, you can change it to QRN, QRM. Uh, there's even some lids in there, QSB, where they start to fade away. And then some guys have come in, the lids are just coming in and just interfering with it. <laughs> and uh, what else do we have there? Oh, the activity. That's the number of stations that will call you at any one time. Uh, when you're just getting your feet on the ground, you might try one or two. Uh, generally, if you try one, it's pretty much like code practice. If you try two, it allows you to discriminate between the two signals coming in. One's going to be a little bit higher pitch, and one might be not exactly the same pitch. It's going to be off pitch so that you can then tune your hearing to cancel out the one that you don't want to hear and so that you can actually draw through the one that you do want to hear. And um, let's see. So the activity, now you can go up, I think the number goes up to maybe 9 or 10, something like that. It's, uh, it makes it pretty complicated, more than what you would want to do at the start. Uh, it'll run, uh, I think it'll run from a minute up to maybe a half an hour. So if you want to sit in the chair for half an hour and copy this stuff, that would be really great. But the idea is now you're not going to be copying it. The end result is not copying it in the Morse runner. The, uh, you're going to be copying it in... N1MM. And so that's really the goal. So that you get familiar, your muscle memory is familiar with the N1MM screen. You know where the, the information goes. You know how to ask for it again, which this will accept. If you don't get it down, you can send it an AGN and it'll come back and it'll send it to you again. Become very familiar with the uh, N1MM program. Now, uh, there is a new program, a new N1MM, and it's called N1MM Plus. Does anybody know what the plus is? Yes. Are you ready for a joke? No. <laughs> I don't. Answer the question first. No. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Does anybody know what the, the plus is? I That was the one that I loaded. That's kind of the current one that slows it down. I mean, the, the one that loads in your machine. It, but it didn't really say... I didn't take the time to read it, but I don't know why what the plus means, but it seems to be something better than the other one. Okay, so anyway, download N1MM so that you have it. You have it on your screen. And then next month we will uh, be able to make this thing work. So <coughs> here's your task for the next four weeks. Download Morse Runner. You saw that we did it here under a lot of pressure tonight. And you just have to do the download. <coughs> right up. Download Morris Runner, put the settings on it like you want, and then start to practice. And the code's going to come through. And just start doing it. You only, like I said earlier, you only have to remember six characters at the most. And just you hear something, and you just write down the first character, and then it comes through again. And you say, okay, I confirm that first character. What's the next one? And then just start entering it into N1MM and pretty soon you have the full call sign and then you hit the send key and then it responds back. So that's the task. I wish I had a demo tonight. I'm going to end this presentation with an apology that I'm sorry that we don't have this thing so I can show you. And then actually, uh, really, Howard, what we're going to do next time too is we're going to give a, a brief demo of how to set up the uh, auto hotkey. It seems like the Morse runner and N1MM are pretty uh, straightforward, pretty self-explanatory. The thing that I couldn't sort out was the auto hotkey <coughs> where there's a script and it takes the information that you put in one. The version of that, that script that you have to download. Okay, well that's... Right here. Oh, okay. <coughs> yeah, John.